And we'll stick with this one because this is uh, going into speaking of keeping people around and Kelsey Grammer confirms that conversations about returning as Beast following the Marvel's cameo. Kelsey Grammer reprised his X-Men The Last Stand role as Hank McCoy for the Marvel's post credit scene, and the actor has now confirmed that he has had conversations about returning to the MCU. While an X-Men reboot is finally in development, Marvel Studios has brought several actors from the 20th Century Fox, now defunct franchise, back to reprise their respective roles in the MCU. Most recently, Hugh Jackman returned for Deadpool and Wolverine. And we also saw Sir Patrick Stewart as Professor Charles Xavier in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Kelsey Grammer as Beast in the Marvel's post credit scene. In The Stinger, Monica Rambo uh, wakes up in a medical lab after getting trapped in an alternate reality following her battle with Darben to find her late mother, Maria, by her side. Rambo is overcome with joy, but Maria, who is actually this world's binary, has no idea who she is. As Monica's confusion grows, a familiar voice says, how's our patient? And a comic accurate, fully CGI take on Hank McCoy, a.k.a. Beast, enters the room. Grammer has previously said that he hadn't heard anything about potentially returning as Beast, but now it confirms he has had some conversations, though he couldn't go into much details. There's nothing that I can talk about. The Fraser Star sells comic book, comic book movie, sorry, comicbook.com. What do I know is that what I do know is that there was a huge sort of outburst when I showed up at the end of the Marvels. I guess it was the response was almost it was not unexpected. It'd be some response, but it was pretty overwhelming. And so there's been conversations and no plans are always subject to change in the MCU. Marvel wouldn't have reintroduced Beast for this particular scene if they didn't intend to bring him back at some point. But we still don't know when we'll see him again. Avengers Secret Wars seems most likely, but there are rumors that he will show up before then. OK, so. This kind of ties into another story that we covered, uh, I think I covered yesterday, that we can combine into this. And the report was essentially, the rumor was that Wolverine is not going to be in the MCU movie, the new, in the, in the new X-Men movie that is coming out. There will be no Wolverine to start the X-Men franchise. And at first I was like, wait, what are you doing? And then I said, it's actually pretty smart if you think it's about it. Very smart. I think it's very smart. if Because the whole problem with all the X-Men movies previously was that you only relied on him till you got to a place because Hugh Jackman became like, you know, the Mick Jagger of the whole thing. And then so when you got to Days of Future Past, it's like, well, what do we do? Well, you got to make it about Wolverine. It's got to be because, because it's Wolverine. He's the star. So if you build up these X-Men first, these characters first, um, then by the time you introduce the new Wolverine, you give him some time and you can marinate and let the X-Men be your whole franchise and for the next 10 years. That also... Couples the fact that you're going to have Hugh Jackman signed a rumor to play Wolverine again, probably leading up to Secret Wars, right? Now, that also makes sense to why Beast would come back. I look and even somebody said in the in the comments right now, it's, well, I thought they were going to get rid of, uh, they're, they're going away from all these characters. Yeah. I think because they're in this spot right now leading to where they're ultimately going to just destroy this whole entire multiverse and put it to rest after the end of Secret Wars, you're gonna you're gonna basically do Deadpool and Wolverine on steroids is what you're gonna do with all these different characters and it's not gonna just be you know um, the 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 characters from the Fox universe it's gonna be anybody that you can put in there anything that you can do it's gonna it's gonna be huge so Kelsey Grammer coming back doesn't surprise me at all and some of the old, and Patrick Stewart will probably be back and they'll probably have tons and tons of people that are gonna come back for little um, things here and there but. You hear this. What do you think about Kelsey Grammer coming back? I mean, look, I, I actually really enjoy his take of Beast, to be honest with you. I'm not saying that I don't like Nicholas Holt. I do. But I think that Kelsey's was a little more on, was more apropos in the sense that, excuse me, the Beast that I know is the, both the one from X-Men, the animated series in 97, that's quoting Shakespeare and things like that. It's it is the one in the comics that like is still very cerebral as that goes. And he gets insecure, but he's not shy. Nicholas Holt's take was always very shy. And I still thought that he did a great job for what he did, but it just never felt directly right. So having Kelsey Grammer come back, I enjoy what he does in that regard. I'm here for it. Like that's that's totally fine with yeah. me. Um if speaking on what you were talking about yesterday with no Wolverine. I also think that that is actually very smart. It's not because Wolverine isn't um, a fan favorite character that people love, like, of course. But like you mentioned, I think the big fatal flaw that the X-Men movies had, you kept centering it fully on him. Right. When part of what makes the X-Men so interesting is that all of the characters are interesting. 
Like, I understand you you killed off Cyclops in Last Stand because he was golf to do Superman Returns. So he didn't, he was like, I'll do it, but I need, you, you're going to have to write me off somehow. And that's ultimately how Cyclops got killed. But like, I didn't really have respect for Cyclops typically. I always liked Wolverine a, little, a lot more. I always liked Gambit a lot more, but like seeing what they did with them in 97 and and seeing the character that he is in the comics, if you if you ever read uh, Avengers versus X-Men, Christian? I mean, I remember there wasn't a, I remember the video game. Was it the video game? There there was there was there's been games with that happening, but there was a comic that came out I want to say within the last decade. Okay. Uh, no, somewhere I, around there. Yeah. And essentially what it is after you know, mutants have had to deal with um, the House of M. So, mm -hmm. like, you've got the No More Mutants situation and all this stuff going on. Ultimately, the Phoenix Force is coming back to Earth. The mutants think they can bring mutant population back by by getting the Phoenix Force. And the Avengers are like, uh, the Phoenix destroys planets and right. universe. No. And so the two of them start fighting because the mutants are like, we need this to save our people. And the Avengers are like, it's too dangerous. And so you end up in a situation where Cyclops is so hell bent on saving the mutant rate, he becomes a villain and he becomes very interesting. That is, that is, that whole arc is incredible to see him become essentially the villain because he's tired of mutants being picked on. I want to see stuff like that. I, yeah. I want to see beyond Wolverine. Ah, oh, I love Gene. Ah, oh, another person died. Ah, oh, like I love Logan. Right. But give me so, there are so many more stories to explore. 100%. And also, by the time, if because the X Men have been proven, at, look, at the time when X Men in 2000 came out, it was the first introduction to it and you got to go big or go home in 2000 Absolutely. and so you got to bring in wolverine for the first one right you're so established in the comic book genre right now in general and wolverine is so uh established plus the fact that it's going to be so hard now that hugh jackman's still going to play the role a little bit longer and he's probably going to have a bigger role in in the avengers and you're going to see him team up or go back you know it's like go to wrestling it's like you always wanted to see the the rock and Hogan, you always wanted to see Stone Cold and whoever, you know, they, they always wanted to see like the legends kind of build up with one another. You're going to get a chance to do that in Secret Wars. You know what I mean? You're going to see like yeah. Wolverine, the Hugh Jackman teaming up with somebody or you see some kind of uh, him and Thor together. Is you know, All right, it's amazing. And then you put it to rest and you give some time to marinate. You introduce the new X-Men when they come in and then Wolverine comes in on the second movie, the third movie, and you don't rush it. Well, I have a question for you, uh, just to further kind of, I, I could be wrong here, because uh, maybe you don't feel this way, but taking the solo Wolverine movies out, like, because obviously that's just focusing on him. Yes, Mutants, X-Men. What would you say is your favorite or top two favorite X-Men movies? Well, not fair. We just did that. We actually, Matt Sarah just launched his channel, and they did um they did a whole thing, um, the X-Men movies from worst to best. And... They were mentioning, they were talking about First Class is one of my favorites. Um, I love First Class because it actually, it's one of the reasons, by the way, and I've told you, I, I called you or texted you immediately after Transformers 1 and told you how yeah. much I love that movie. You know, how? just to sidetrack, and I'll come back to this point real quick about Transformers 1, how funny and ironic is this? I, You and me hated that trailer so much, hated it, and talked about how horrible it was going to look. And not only do I wind up loving it, and I went up doing a reaction. I, I got tagged. The official Transformers 1 uh, Instagram account posted my reaction. I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, who would have thought in a million years? They probably would be like, I would be like, I, I figured Optimus Prime would be waiting for him at my door. What, what were you saying? Shut up. And, <laughs> and, and it's like now it's uh, it, 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 it is pleasantly surprised. But the reason I bring that up is because of the origin and the way that it kind of, the way they played it with the lore. And that's why I like First Class. But that and probably... Days of Future Past and X2 are probably the... the so, the, the, the irony of all ironies. So, first class, you have nothing but a cameo out of Wolverine. A very great cameo. It was a perfectly used one. Hi, we're putting together a team. Go F yourself. Like, the right. genius, right? Yeah. Days of Future Past, yes, we are using Logan as our, our main perspective, and he is who we are using to travel in the past, but it is such a focus on Mystique's feeling of, like betrayal with both charles and eric and it really is more focused on mystique and jennifer lawrence and that kind of whole path and essentially logan trying to stop her so that they all don't die 
And then the last one you mentioned was X2. Again, yeah. Logan is still at the center of it. He's walking yeah. around with Rogue and Bobby. And I'm talking and about X, I'm talking about X like, movies, by the way, not like Solo. Like Logan would obviously, I think Logan right. out of, is my favorite oh, of movie course. out of all of them. So that's that's not like an X movie. I, I intentionally asked for us not to use that yes. just from the standpoint yes. of like uh, obviously. Yeah, it's like it's based in the X Men and the and the team and stuff. Yes. Yes. And and then in that, like the storylines that are interesting are like essentially seeing uh the whole situation with like my favorite part of X2 as I did a rewatch up to Deadpool was Storm and Nightcrawler ha- which we've seen a number of different times in different iterations having a conversation about being a mutant and all that and you know you have Storm who keeps her composure but talks about a lot of times in that movie and in other iterations about being not just a mutant but being a black woman and so the hate that mutants get and the anger that she has and the Nightcrawler who looks like a literal demon talking about trying to you know I, I get it but people are human and trying to have like compassion and empathy and all that. like those are the moments that become really interesting to listen to and watch and it's not to say that wolverine isn't interesting but you know what i'm saying like that it adds an extra layer other than just the same story we know about logan constantly right which is still good but if you hear the same story over and over again you eventually kind of get tired of it you know i totally agree so i ask you guys what do you think about all this stuff what we've been discussing thus far, and of course, how the X-Men will play out. What say you? Put your thoughts in there. Got to hear about these things. When-